Expected value is the averaging process that's used when you're talking about probabilities. Think about the numbers that appear on the sides of a die. There are six numbers. What's the average of all those numbers? If you add up the numbers on the die and divide by how many of them there are, which is six of course, you get 21 over 6, or 3 and a half as the average of the numbers on the die. Another way of looking at that calculation, which involves probability, is to think about taking all the different outcomes possible when you roll the die. When you roll the die, you'll get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. And in the expression at the bottom here, we're multiplying each of those outcomes times its probability of occurrence. If the die is, is symmetric and balanced, then the, the outcome 1 has probability 1 sixth, the outcome 2 has probability 1 sixth, and so forth. When you multiply each outcome times its probability, you're really doing the same arithmetic as when you just average the numbers on the die. And you again get 3 and a half. Now in general, this is what the concept of expected value is. If you take the possible outcomes of some experiment, which is some set of numbers, and if the probabilities of the outcomes are known, then the expected value is obtained simply by taking each possible outcome and multiplying it times its probability, and then adding up all those terms. For example, suppose Charlie goes to two movies 10% of his weekends, 40% of the weekends he goes to one movie and half of all his weekends he goes to no movie at all. On average, how many movies does he go to per weekend? Or to express it in the language of probability, what is the expected value for the number of movies he goes to during a weekend? To calculate that, we take each of the possibilities. We know he'll either go to no movies, one movie, or two movies. We multiply, multiply each of those possibilities times its probability. Going to no movies has probability 0.50. Going to one movie has probability 0.40. And going to two movies has probability 0.10. When you do that arithmetic, you get 0.6 which is simply saying that on average he goes to 0 0.6 movies per weekend. Expected value becomes particularly simple when you think about it in the context of an independent trials experiment. If you're doing n independent trials and p is your success probability, then the expected value for the number of successes in n trials is simply the number of trials times the success probability. To motivate this, think about tossing a coin. Suppose you're tossing it four times and counting the number of heads. If the number of tosses n is four and the probability of heads on any given toss is one half, 4 times a half is 2. So it should seem quite intuitively natural that in 4 coin tosses the expected value for the number of heads would be 2. Suppose you're throwing 5 darts at a target. Each throw has probability 0.45 of hitting the target What's the expected value for the number of hits in the five throws? In this case, the number of throws is five. The probability of a hit on any given throw is 0.45. Multiply the number of trials times the success probability, and we get two and a quarter, which, it, which simply says that on average, if you throw five darts, on average, you'll hit around two and a quarter uh, throws in through two and a quarter times in your five throws. Now let's switch to a basketball example. Mark is 
a 70% free throw shooter, which means on which means he hits 70% of his foul shots. If he goes to the foul line to shoot a one and one, what's the expected number of points he will score and what's the expected number of shots he will take? Two separate expected value questions. We start by drawing a tree that shows all the things that can happen when you go to the free throw line with a one and one. Remember a one and one means if you miss your first one you don't get any more attempts. If you hit your first one then you get to shoot a second free throw which you might miss or you might hit. The probabilities, 30% um, chance he misses his first one and then that's all he gets. 70% chance he hits his first one and then if he hits his first one, 30% chance or 70% chance of missing and hitting the second respectively. So it's easy to calculate the probabilities of the outcomes. 30% chance that he misses his first shot and that's the end of the story. 21% uh, chance that he hits the first shot and misses the second. 49% chance that he hits two free throws. So for the expected value computation, we take all the possibilities, 0, 1, or 2. We know he'll hit 0, 1, or 2 free throws. Multiply each possibility times its probability. Hitting none has a 30% chance, so that's probability 0.3. Hitting his first and missing his second is the only way he can hit 1, which has a probability 0.21. And hitting both his free throws has probability 0.49. The expected value comes out to be 1.19, which simply says, on average, when Mark goes to the free throw line to shoot a one and one, on average, he'll score 1.19 points. The second part of the question said, what's the expected number of shots he will take? What's the expected value for the number of shots he will take? When we look at the tree, we see this outcome where he takes just one shot, and these two outcomes where he gets two shots because he hit his first one. Taking one shot has probability 0.3. These two cases, their probabilities add up to 0.7. So that's two shots times probability 0.7. And that gives us 1.7 as the expected value for the number of shots he takes. So we've done two separate expected value computations in this example. 1.7 is the expected value for the number of free throw shots he takes and 1.19 was the expected value for the number of points he scores. Bill has a dresser drawer in which he has piled some socks. There are seven blue socks and three white socks in the drawer and he reaches in his drawer and starts randomly pulling out socks one at a time until he has a matching pair. Let's draw a tree diagram for that process. His first sock can be either blue or white. The probabilities are 7 tenths and 3 tenths because of what we know to be in the drawer. If his first sock is a blue sock, then when he pulls out the second sock, the probabilities are 6 over 9 and 3 over 9 because the first sock is blue, leaving 6 blue socks and 3, blue, and three white socks in the drawer. If his second sock, if his first sock is blue and his second sock is blue, then he has a matching pair, so he doesn't do anything beyond that. If his first sock is blue and the second one is white, then what does he have left in the drawer? He still has six blue and two white, so the probabilities for the third sock are six eighths for blue and two eighths for white. And of course, after he draws the third sock, then he's bound to have a matching pair. He'll either have two blues or two whites and basically the same analysis on the right side of the tree. The first sock might be white. When he draws the second sock, the probabilities here are determined by the fact that the first sock was white, which would leave only seven blue and two white in the drawer, which is where these probabilities come from. And unless he gets two whites, if his second one is blue, then he has to draw a third sock, which will be either blue or white with the probabilities shown. So here's the complete tree for the process. We can get the probability for all the outcomes by multiplying up the branches as usual and the probabilities are now shown across the top. 
The question we want to consider is what's the probability he gets a pair of white socks? Let's look at that question first. What's the probability he gets a pair of white socks? The cases in which he winds up with a pair of white socks are the cases that correspond to the yellow circles here. His first sock could be blue and then draw two whites after that, or he could draw white, blue, white, or he could draw just two whites. These are the three ways that he winds up with a pair of white socks. Their probabilities are as shown, and we add their probabilities together and get 11 over 60 as the probability of him winding up with a pair of white socks. The next question is, what's the probability he gets a match with his first two socks? Well, the way that can happen is he can get a blue followed by a blue, or he can get a white followed by a white. Those are the two ways that he can pull a matching pair with just uh, pulling two socks from the drawer. Those probabilities are as shown, 7 fifteenths and 1 fifteenths, so the chances of that happening is 8 fifteenths. Now we turn to an expected value question. What's the expected value for the number of socks he will pull from the drawer? We know that it's going to be two or three. He, when he starts pulling, well, the, in, the, in the tree, the only possibility shown for the number of socks pulled out of the drawer is two or three. The two yellow circles are the two cases where he pulls two socks out of the drawer, and the four brown circles now are the cases where he pulls three socks out of the drawer. It never takes him more than three socks because he'll always have two socks of one color when he has pulled a total of three socks. So for the expected value for the number of socks, the possibilities are either two or three. We simply multiply each of them times its probability. Two socks has probability 8 fifteenths, the sum of these two numbers. And three socks has probability 7 fifteenths, the sum of these four numbers. And the expected value then comes out to be a little less than two and a half. Which says on average, if he does this repeatedly, on average, he'll end up pulling a little less than two and a half socks out of the drawer. Let's come back to free throws again. Again, we'll consider a basketball player who hits 70% of his free throws. If we consider his attempts to be independent trials, and he makes five attempts in a game, What's the probability he hits exactly four of those shots? Well, that's easily handled by the independent trials formula, isn't it? We're talking about four successes in five trials, where the success probability on any given trial is 0.7. The independent trials formula gives us an expression that computes that probability, as shown here. As a little variation on the question, what's the probability he hits at least four shots? Well, what does at least four mean in this context? It means either hitting four or five, right? So we just add the probability of four hits plus the probability of five hits. We just calculated the probability of four. The probability of five hits would be 0.7 to the fifth. You can also think of that as a special case of the independent trials formula if you like. Add those probabilities and you get the probability of at least four hits in the five shots. Now let's move to an expected value question. What's the expected value for the number of shots he hits? The expected value, since we're talking about an independent trials process, is just number of trials times success probability, five foul shots, 70% chance of hitting each, 3.5 for the expected value for the number of shots he hits, which is a theoretical average. It says on average, if he shoots five free throws, he should make 3.5 points from them. The difference in this example and the one in one foul shot ex uh, example that we did a little bit ago is that in this case, we know exactly how many shots he's taking, so we can use the independent trials formula. In the one-in-one -one situation, we did not know to start with how many shots he would be taking because it depended on whether or not he hit his first one. 
So for that reason, you can't use this E equals NP formula in that earlier example. The situation of Tanya trying to pass a qualifying exam is one that we have looked at in an earlier context. Remember, she was allowed three attempts at passing. Each time she takes the exam, there's a 40% chance she will pass. The question now we're going to consider is an expected value question. What's the expected value for the number of times she will take the exam? We go back to the tree that we have seen when we earlier considered this process and fill in the probabilities just as we did before. There's always a 0.4 probability of passing, a 0.6 probability of failing, and based on those probabilities on the branches, we can easily get the probabilities for each of the four outcomes. We're now looking at the expected value for the number of times she will take the exam. And of course, from the tree, we see this case where she takes the exam only once because she passes it the first time. This outcome, where she takes the exam twice because she fails it the first time and passes it the second. And then these two cases are cases where she takes the exam three times. This case being where she fails it twice and then passes it. This case where she fails it three times and can't take it again because there's a three attempt limit. So for the expected value, we take each of these possibilities, one attempt, two attempt, two attempts, or three attempts and multiply times the probability. One attempt, this outcome has probability 0.4. Two attempts, this outcome has probability 0.24. And three attempts, the probability of that is the sum of these two. And do the arithmetic and get slightly less than two as the expected value for the number of times she'll take the exam. 